Hi, this is Gary Auden, and we have a Telecom Reseller Educast today. The title is TDM is Dead, Migrate to the IPPBX. With me today is Amar Ghaffar, VP of Sales and Marketing for Vodia Networks. And Vodia Networks is a software company that focuses on IPPBX and call center software for both enterprises and service providers. So let's talk about what you're going to learn about today. We're going to introduce the IPPBX and why you should migrate to an IP environment. We'll talk a little bit about features, a lot more about licensing, and why the licensing extensions make sense. We'll also discuss open source and why that is the right choice, open standards and neutrality, in other words, vendor neutrality, that you can go to multiple vendors, how to create a multiple tendency system in cloud hosting, and how to create an automated rollout system. So let's start with the first slide, Amar. What is an IPPBX? Thank you for the introduction, uh, Gary. Uh, so uh, an IPBX is, uh, is a software that provides uh, telephony functionality using data networks instead of the traditional circuit switch networks. Uh, it exists as a software running on a server, or it can also be embedded uh, on a hardware appliance. And it basically switches calls from uh, PSTN and mobile networks to data networks. So that provides the technology. Can you give us some reasons why we should migrate to IP? Right. So in a nutshell, uh, you're looking at lower costs, better functionality, and better integration. Uh, TDM-based phone systems uh, used to be a lot more expensive, uh, and they usually came with hefty service contracts and uh, hefty phone bills for long-distance international calling. Uh, in case of IP, that has changed because of uh, lower per minute costs uh, with SIP trunks. And if you look at the statistics, uh, on average, uh, companies can save up to 33% on their telephony costs with IPBXs. And then uh, IPBXs also provide better integration with the more uh, uh, current uh, solutions for CRM and ERP, which are all based on IP. Now, I know you have some more reasons to discuss why we should migrate to IP. Can you talk about those a little bit? Right. So the bi biggest disadvantage of uh, TDM phone uh, TDM based phone systems is uh, the physical restriction uh, or proximity uh, to your voice lines. So that means you cannot incorporate remote uh, and home users. In case of uh, IPv access, mobility is built into uh, an IPvX phone system. So that means your remote workers can connect to your phone system uh, from any location. And then uh, uh, I, uh, the IPv access also encourage bring your own device schemes, which means that your users can uh, connect using their, their personal smartphones or use mobile apps. Uh, so that provides the freedom of end devices. Uh, again, IPv access provides better integration with uh, your peripheral systems and solutions like ERP or CRM. And it also uh, provides features which are, which are not seen on TDM, like presence, uh, instant messaging, and video. And of course, then the biggest advantage is uh, the, the consolidation of voice and data networks, which means lower maintenance and lower costs. In looking at those IPBX features, too, that I think are rather important are presence and the click-to-call, and then your integration with WebRTC, which is not possible at all with the TDM world. Absolutely. Now, we talked earlier that we should be discussing licensing, and you have three ideas for licensing models. Would you go through those quickly? Right. So uh, concurrent calls basically means that uh, these licenses uh, put a cap on the number of concurrent channels. Uh, User-based licenses are based on, on the number of users in your phone system. Uh, and then open source basically means uh, an open source software which does not require any licensing whatsoever. So there's no cap on the number of users or the number of concurrent channels. You said to me earlier you think the user-based licensing makes more sense than the other two. Could you go a little further? Right. So if you look at a user-based licensing model, then that means that you have a dedicated channel for every user. So that means if, if two of your users are in, uh, occupied in, in customer calls, you still have two channels for the, for the rest of the two users. If we look at uh, a calls-based license, that means that if you have two shared call licenses, although you can have up to four users, but if those, those two call channels are busy, uh, you would not be able to receive a third call. So that, that is one of the biggest disadvantage of uh, calls-based licenses compared to user-based licenses. 
Would I be correct in saying a user-based license is much more appropriate for a contact center, whereas call-based licenses would not be? Right. I mean, user-based licenses are easier to comprehend for a business also because it provides a one-to-one -one correspondence between a user and a, a user license on the PBX. Uh, it's difficult to estimate your, your calls uh, usage uh, in case of calls licenses. You would not know how many calls a business would need up front. So uh, it's easier to comprehend for the business if they are looking at user-based licenses. You also talked about, in the previous slide, open source and our pros and cons for that. Right, so uh, one of the, the biggest advantage of uh, open source is that there, there's no licensing fee, so you're looking at lower costs. It's also easier to roll out, uh, and uh, you can also uh, benefit from continuous real-time improvement from, from other uh, uh, developers, uh, and it can also be tailored to your own business needs. Uh, the disadvantage is that it, there, there might be hidden costs involved or legal implications. Uh, but to summarize, uh, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Uh, if, you're, if you have uh, uh, investment concerns, then open source is an excellent choice to get things going. But then you should also consider uh, the, uh, the long-term effects of deploying an open source software, which can be hidden costs and legal implications. Now, I'm going to change the subject now and talk about multi-tenancy. And that comes up to me as one as a service provider, I'd like to have this. But I've worked with some state governments where the um, public safety people do not want to be integrated with uh, the rest of the uh, agencies and a government uh, bureaucracy. And so you really want multi-tenancy. Can you talk about multi-tenancy and how we accomplish that? Right. So a multi-tenant system is basically uh, a system which can serve multiple clients through a single server. So you can basically logically separate uh, clients in individual domains uh, on a single server. And the biggest advantage is that you can optimally uh, utilize the resources of the, of the system instead of deploying individual servers for each client. So this means uh, lower total cost of ownership for the service provider and the customer. And uh, it also allows the service provider to centrally manage all clients through a single interface instead of managing dedicated resources for each individual client. Are you saying then that some of the software packages on the market require multiple copies of it to create multi-tenancy? Right, so the, the, uh, what is true multi-tenancy is to be able to serve multiple uh, clients on a single server through a single instance. Uh, if you're running multiple instances of the software using virtual machines, that is not really multi-tenancy, but you're actually creating individual virtual machines running individual copies of the software. This is a configuration. Would you just go through this for a quick moment and then uh, we'll move on? Right, so a true multi-tenant system will look something like this, that you have uh, three clients connected uh, to a multi-tenant IPVX, and each of these uh, companies, they have their own uh, domain or uh, user space uh, within that PBX. So they share uh, the, the resources uh, of the PBX, but they are logically separate on the PBX. They are not visible to each other, uh, and they can uh, then benefit from lower uh, costs, and the service provider can centrally manage all three companies through a single server. Now, one of the words that lots of people keep talking about is standards, and standards become important because it allows a lot more flexibility. Does that help right, us with so better independence? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, open standards, solutions which are based on open standards, uh, are based on uh, publicly available frameworks that provide a solution for incorporating uh, that solution into a product. Uh, they are publicly available uh, frameworks, and uh, they encourage healthy competition uh, by uh, encouraging uh, innovation. And uh, on part of the customer, this means that they have the freedom to incorporate the best products into their overall solution uh, by mixing and matching different products from different vendors. Um, and they can also uh, help the, the customer in avoiding any kind of vendor lock-in effect to uh, over rely on a single vendor. And uh, yeah, those are some of the benefits of open standards. What that leads into is the form of vendor neutrality, and that seems to be very important here. Right, so vendor neutrality means that uh, you're not relying on a single vendor for your, for your solution. Uh, so that means you can 
you can research the market and you know find the best products that fit into your solution as long as they are compliant to an open standard. And deployment auto automation means that you can uh, uh, automate your rollouts and manage large installations uh, using a single interface. Can we talk a little bit more about the uh, detection of devices, the automated process? Right, so looking at this, uh, what we have is that these devices uh, have been automatically detected in the network and uh, in an automatic device detection mechanism you would be able to assign them uh, a user extension and they would be automatically auto-provisioned with that extension. So there's, there's zero touch involved here. All this is done automatically uh, and, and this is what a good automatic device detection and deployment system should look like. Well that means there's a lot of benefits you haven't even mentioned yet. Right, so uh, the biggest benefits of course are uh, that you can uh, automate the, uh, the deployment of the, the settings and the firmware for the devices. That means the, the end customers can just plug in their devices in the network and they get automatically provisioned. Then the, the service provider can automatically uh, remotely manage all, all endpoints uh, through a single interface uh, and you can ensure security and uh, reliability of the provisioning through uh, secure provisioning mechanisms. You can also auto-provision uh, extended functions like uh, function keys uh, and buttons. And you can also eliminate engineer involvement by automating these rollouts. Yes, by uh, eliminating the engineering, you're actually eliminating high-cost people as well. Absolutely. Now, this has been very worthwhile. Uh, would you talk a little bit about the resources we have here on the slide that are available? Right, so uh, if, if you want to get more information about uh, different uh, solutions like multi-tenancy or bring your own device schemes, uh, please do visit our website and take a look at these resources. We have some, uh, some more useful information on our wiki. Uh, you can take a look at that. Uh, we also have uh, a Facebook and LinkedIn profile, so you can find more information on that. And these are the sites where you have service and, and uh, sales providers? Yeah, so we are uh, located uh, in, uh, in Woburn, Massachusetts, that's our HQ. And we also have regional offices in Australia, Hong Kong, France, South Africa and China. Uh, yeah, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. It was a pleasure.